Welcome back. We're continuing where the last video left off, where we inserted a table into our states database. We're now going to insert records into our states database. So let's continue from where we left off. So I'm going to go back to here and we're going to add some records now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do save as and I'll just call it states underscore create table because this is the code to create the table. I'll just do that and still has the dot SQL and I'll just hit save and then I'll go back here. So I have states create table and what I'll do is I'll delete this one and I'll create a new SQL file and I'll call it states and I'll put records dot SQL. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to try to run this code instead of just running it. I'm going to run the source file when I do it. So I'm going to put new file here and what I'll do is I'll go here and highlight all of these. Now this is going to be inserting. So now we're going to insert. Now if I go here, you might say, well, how do I insert content? Well, we're going to look for something called insert into SQL insert into. Now this is where you insert into a table. You insert content into a table. Insert into statement is used to insert new records into a table. So we're going to use insert into. So I'm going to go down here and you could look at some samples and see how they do it. I'm even going to copy this one with all these kind of German names here or something they use for this customer's table. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back to my SQL here and I'm going to paste this and I'm going to break this up a little bit so I can read it a little bit better and I'll put values like this. Now hopefully you see where I'm going here. We're not going to do customers. We're going to use states and we're not going to do all this stuff. Customer name and all that, you know, we're not going to do that. We're going to go up here and use this stuff. So I could copy this right out of here and put these in because these are the column names. So it's saying these are the column names. Insert into states into these columns, the values, and we're not putting in these guys. What we're putting in, you see where I'm going here with this? We're going to put all this stuff. Here they all are, and they're all in order, and they all have the commas, and the last one has a semicolon. So this stuff can all be copied. 1 through 50, all 50 states can be copied and be put here. It'll replace this whole first element here. So we're not putting in Tom Erickson, Cardinal, and all this stuff. We're putting in all our states. And it should be color coded pretty much the same way. So again, what we're doing, you know, check the insert into, make sure it looks looks the way it should look. Insert into table name, columns, and then the values. And that's all we're doing. So when we go here, we're saying insert into table name, columns. These are the columns one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the values, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, we have an int, then three more ints, and two var cars. So this is actually an SQL file that we could run. Now we could copy all of this and paste it in there, but it gets a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, make sure it looks okay, and I'm going to save it. I don't think I need this anymore, so I'm going to close up this text file. And this is our SQL file, and I did save it, I believe. And I'm going to go back here, and what you could do is do something called source and I'm going to put in the file name. Now I could see here it's called states underscore records dot SQL. So it's states underscore records dot SQL. And then I'm going to put a semicolon and run it, except now when I do this, it's not going to work. I'm going to get an error or something. Now I'm not going to do that, but do you know why? Think of why it's not going to work because I just wrote states records dot SQL. Let's go here. Where is it? it's actually in databases folder. So you have to put, if you make a directory and it's not in the main directory, you have to put the directory. So I have to put this, I have to actually copy this and I could copy it right out of here and go back and I'll just backspace and paste it. And it actually went, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't hit enter, but it actually went when I did that. So 50 rows affected duplicate zero. So it actually worked. I didn't even, I pasted it there and I didn't need to put the semicolon in, but when I pasted it, it actually worked. So it did source databases states dot records SQL. And when I did it, it actually ran and I didn't put in a semicolon. So let me, if you ever get here and, and there's something missing, you still have this arrow and you think, how do I get out of that little arrow? Just put a semicolon and do that. And 
Now it says you have an error with syntax, but I don't think I do. I think I'm okay. I'm just gonna put select all, which is the asterisk, select all, and this is all at the bottom of our console here. I'll move this up or you can clear it, but I'll do select all from states. And remember states has a capital S now, and I'll put a semicolon and I'll hit return. And there they are, so it worked. So even though it did run it right away because I did see this thing that said 50 rows affected and et cetera. So what we actually did is we did a source file. So just like you can do in a console, not only can you put in actual code in a console, you could run a file, just like you could run a Python file and do you know something.py and you actually run that file. So we actually ran our source SQL file, or you could copy in the code. We could have we could have copied all this stuff and pasted it in there. And that would have worked as well, except it's just a little it's a little more messy, but that worked fine. So you can source that. Now we did have to run back and forth because we made one file that actually created the table. We made one file that actually inserted the records. We could have put them all together if we wanted to, but I wanted to show you both ways that you could paste commands into the console or you can actually run a whole file you just have to make sure it's okay and then if you get an error you gotta fix it if you have an error it'll usually tell you oh it's on line 12 or something and you could go say oh I forgot a comma or something like that so that's our database so now that we have a database like this I'm just gonna do control L and that'll kinda take us to the top now that doesn't wipe everything out our stuff is still there but I'll just do control L just so we could do this and I'll just run like another thing here now if you're not familiar with SQL, you could go here and just check out what select does, like select where or something like that. And I'll go here to where, and where is actually like a like a filter where you can filter out something that you want. So just for example, let's say you want to find out all the states that are the original 13 colonies. Well, you would use the where clause and you would say where order ID is probably less than 14 and that should bring up all those elements. So let's try that. We'll go in here and do a real quick one. We'll do select all, that means all columns. Now you don't always have to use all columns. You could choose certain columns, but I'm gonna say select all columns. That's what the asterisk means. And I'll say select all, and you have to say from the table. So I'll say from states, and then I'll say where, the where clause, it's like a filter. And I'll say where order ID. Now, if you're not sure what the thing is, you can see it's order ID with an underscore. So I'm gonna say where order ID and I'll say equals, or I won't say equals, I'll say less than 14, because we're looking for the 13. So we'll say less than 14. So we're gonna select all the states, all the columns from the states table where the order ID is less than 14. So that should give us the first 14 states. And there they are in that order. And there's all kinds of things we're gonna do with SQL, but I just wanted to get you started with that. And so if you teach SQL, you teach databases, you can create other tables and things like that. And you could use this online, you could use it in the cloud, which is really great if you happen to be teaching courses where you can't have everybody download all kinds of stuff and they're uploading things. You know, This way you have access to all their files. Remember, all they have to do is nominate you as a teacher. So, so this is it, this is kind of getting started. We'll do some more with SQL in here using Python anyway. Anywhere. And what I'll do right now, I'll just enter quit to kind of close the running console and I'll hit enter and it says bye. Now it's still open here, so you can close this up. And actually one thing just to remind you of, if you needed to save this, like let's say this was assignment you gave to your students and you said, hey, I want you to output the first 13 states. And they, they could just say they did it, but you on here and clicked and highlighted this line and you went to the top and you did shift click, you could highlight all that, you could paste it in a text file, and that way they have record of what they did, even if they had errors, any of that kind of stuff. So if they, even if they have errors, they could send you this stuff and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. And you could be like, oh, well, you forgot the, the comma after this, or you forgot the semicolon or something. So that way, after you close this up, you can have record of this. You can just kind of copy this, paste it into a text file, and just call it console. So you could put output and put the date that they worked on it and just put console so you know it's from the console. So I just wanted to point that out one more time. So I'll close this up because I don't need to save this for any reason. And now I'm back to my files. Now I don't need to keep this open either. I could just go back to my dashboard if I want. And as long as that's saved, I'm in good shape. And I don't have any consoles open, so I don't have to close any consoles. So it, that did go away since I closed it. And that was our first kind of creating a database. We used both SQL code, and we also sourced an SQL file in our MySQL console 
for our state's database in Python Anywhere. So hopefully you'll come back for some more videos on SQL using Python Anywhere in the cloud.